everybody and welcome back to Libby's Lovelies, your inspirational craft channel. Today I am going to be making a, or should I say upcycling, a glass jar and using it to make a um, pretty spring themed vase to hold flowers. Um, it'll be perfect for a gift or just to set on my desk or my craft space or my dining table. So um, I'm going to give you a list of all of the things that you'll need if you would like to do this yourself. And just so you know, there is another YouTuber by the name of Tracy Phillips and her channel is Gift Basket Appeal. Um, she also has a Facebook group and she's the one who inspired me um, to do this project. Now I've done it several times off camera, um, but I have a group of my own, the Maker Exchange, that um, many of the members have requested a video or tutorial be made. So I wanted to um, just provide them with the steps that I use in order to produce this myself or to create this um, vase myself. So I am gonna drop a link to Tracy's channel um, so that you can be inspired by some of her creations because she's got a lot of wonderful ideas and most of them are, actually, should I say all of them are budget friendly. And I agree with her when she says that it doesn't cost a lot in order to create and um, and you are only as limited as your imagination and your creativity. So, you know, just thinking outside of the box and using items that you have around the house, you can create some really pretty and inexpensive gifts for others as well as um, decorations and um, items for your own home. So now to get started, the things that you'll need are um, some paper napkins. Most of them that you find that have decoration on the outside are generally two ply. So you'll end up having to separate um, the white part from the napkin and I'll show you that in, um, during the process. These napkins I purchased from the Dollar Tree, for a dollar obviously, and it's 30 to a pack. These are beverage napkins, so they are approximately 10 inches by 10 inches. And luckily, lucky for me, the when you open up the napkin, the pattern is also on the inside. A lot of times you'll get a dinner napkin and once you open it up, you only have like one half of a pattern, so you have to use more napkins. But um, which isn't a problem because you're buying it from the Dollar Tree. So you you may use two or three napkins on something like that or a larger project. But um, just keeping things cost effective. It's good when the whole napkin can be used. So you'll need the napkins. You'll need scissors to cut in the event that you your napkin is larger. Um, you'll obviously need some form of a glass jar, bottle, whatever you want to use. Um, it just depends on what you're in what you know what your end product or creation will be. Um, you'll need Mod Podge. Now, keep in mind that they come in several different fi finishes. So, depending on whether or not you want a high gloss finish, a matte finish, or a semi gloss finish, will de will determine what which Mod Podge um, product you purchase. Today, I'm going to be using the gloss, and it's shiny, but it's not a high gloss. Um, and then for the base, underneath the napkin, I'll be using the Apple Barrel White from, this is acrylic paint, from Walmart. Um, for the top of the jar, so that the rim isn't showing, it likely won't. Once I put the flowers in, I will be adding trim using a glue gun. You can also use um, tacky glue or fabric glue, uh, whatever you have on hand that will do the trick. That's what you want to use. Um, you'll need a brush, obviously. The best one I found was the sponge brushes because it gives a really smooth coverage, um, full fuller coverage and um, a smoother finish. So that, and obviously something to put your Mod Podge and paint in. You'll want flowers to add, whatever print you use you'll want to use flowers to complement it or contrast it, that's up to you. And then I always have on hand while I'm creating some type of embellishments just to enhance. So, you know, I may use some rhinestones or some pearls or um, an extra flower or um, pearl trim, some type of bling, it's up to you. And one of the tricks that I learned from Tracy was the 
using the saran wrap. A lot of times when you put the napkin on, you'll want to be able to smooth it out. And um, if you do it with your fingers, that's my son in the background, getting ready to homeschool. If you do it with your fingers, you'll likely tear the, paper, the napkin. So just using a little bit of saran wrap, you can smooth it out without one, getting your fingers full of my Podge, and two, without tearing the napkin. So, um, once you have all those items together, come on back and we'll get started. Okay, so I have gone on ahead and put a little bit of paint inside the tray. And I'm left-handed, so sometimes you'll see my hand in the way, but hopefully you'll get a good angle on this. So I'm just going to use this paint brush or this sponge brush to, and I'm just dabbing out some of the extra paint, uh, water in here um, so that it doesn't create streaks in the on the on the jar. Okay, so again, I have already gone ahead and washed this really well and gotten off all of the sticky residue. And um, so I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit, little, from top to bottom, a little bit at a time. I'm going to go ahead and try and get a full coverage of paint on this jar. Now, one of the things that I'll tell you is that it's not important that this is, you get total full coverage. You do want... It to be um, well covered but if you get a few streaks here and there um, you know don't be alarmed and the more you mess with the paint the more streaks you're gonna get so resist the urge to go back and recover while it's wet you may have to wait in between um, the layers in order to you know you may have to wait for it to dry in order to add in the second layer of paint but um, Rome wasn't built in a day, so I'm pretty sure somebody's got some laundry or some homework or something you can do while we're waiting for those layers to dry. Now, I'll be honest with you, a lot of times I don't ha I know what, how much time I have, so I may only have 30 minutes to work on a project in, in the course of a day. So I will go ahead and um, use my blow dryer. So most crafters have a heat, um, a heat gun. I don't have that. And not yet, anyways. Um, and I've just recently started paper crafting, so... Um, and as well as most of the things that I do is um, sewing, and I just started on embroidery. So, paper crafting is relatively new to me. Or should I say I'm new to it, because it's been around for quite some time. So as you can see, I'm just taking the brush and going around the top. Um, God bless you. Um, that's my son. Back there with a little sneeze. Hopefully that won't turn into anything major. But yeah, so anyways, I'm just uh, going around the edge just to make sure that uh, I've gotten most of the spots. And I'm going to let it dry. Once it dries, I'll check and see if I need to apply another coat. Um, and if I don't, then we'll move on to step two, which will be applying the napkin. So this is what it looks like once I apply the first coat of paint. Okay. And I do want to make sure that there are no um, large puddles or uneven spots of paint. I don't want it to be thick, too thick in certain areas. Um, otherwise, it won't dry as fast as it will with the rest of it. And then I'll end up with a mess on my hands. Okay, so that's what we have. So I'm going to take a few minutes, hit it with the blow dryer, and then I'll come back and we'll move on to step two. Next step will be to apply the Mod Podge and onto the jar and um, and apply the uh, and place the napkin on top of that. So and it looks like I'm getting pretty low on the Mod Podge, so I think I'm gonna have to just use it out of the jar because it's barely there. So. Um, now, what I wanted to show you was that most of these napkins are too fine. So, you don't want to, you want to make sure that you are only using the top and printed layer of the two ply napkin. So, what you'll need to do is just get to the edge, 
um, crinkle it best you can and try and separate so that you can separate those two layers and um, you can basically just discard the lower portion. So you'll need to do this. And then you have the two layers. Now I've already done that to this one. So I am going to just measure and see how much of this napkin I'm going to need for this. And if you need to use a second one, what you'll want to do is tear along the edge so that you don't have a straight and harsh line. Um, so I think I will have enough. Great. So I'm going to go ahead and tear. I'm going to cut the top, cut it to fit the height. And a little bit longer just so I can tuck the edge in inside of the, the jar. And then now that I have it cut to the height, I want to go ahead and tear the edges a little bit just so that um, the line is not so harsh. Otherwise, it just kind of, um, I think you get what I'm saying, but nevertheless, just showing you that part of the process. And you just want to tear off the bare minimum or whatever you need in order to make it fit. So. All right, so with saran wrap in hand or clean wrap, I got this from the Dollar Tree. So it doesn't have to be, you know, the ex something expensive. Just whatever you, whatever you can pull out of your pantry or what have you. All right, so I'm just going to do this in um, sections that I can manage. So I'm going to get a nice coat of the Mod Podge right here. All the way up to the top. And the smaller the sections, the easier it is for you to um, lay it and reposition it if need be. So then I'll take the starting point, which this is that. It's not an exact science, but you want to make sure that you pull, gently pull out any of the, um, if it buckles at all, then gently pull on that just to get it straight. Otherwise, it'll end up um, on an angle around the whole jar. Okay, so we've got the starting point here. And I'm going to dip this in. Okay. So then we just continue around the entire jar. as we go and I was thinking about making a few of these and um, giving giving them to some of my mom friends for Mother's Day so these will make great um, and it's, this is an inexpensive way to show someone that you um, you think that they're awesome mothers or um, just wishing them a happy Mother's Day and don't forget about the bereaved. Just because someone's child is no longer here with them doesn't mean that they're no longer a mom. You know, I am the mother of an angel. And so um, while I do have a child here on earth, as you can hear in many of my backgrounds, um, before I had him, uh, it was Mother's Day was a very difficult time for me um, after losing our daughter. So I just want to encourage you to reach out to a mom on Mother's Day and just remind them that, you know, you still recognize them as a mom and you want to celebrate their motherhood as well, because I know I would have certainly appreciated it, um, in which I did have friends that did it. So um, I think that's part of the reason uh, I'm able to see that there is a need there is because someone saw that need and pointed that out and um, reached out to me and understood that for, for me. Now, sometimes it'll end up buckling here, so you'll um, 
because there's a curve here, I'm going to have to cut it so that it doesn't continue to shift along. And you'll be able to position it, continue to position it. Otherwise, you'll end up with this shifting around. And don't worry about whether or not there's wrinkles in it because this is handmade. This is handcrafted. So the expectation is not to have an end product that looks like it came off the manufacturing um, floor. This The whole idea is for it to have a unique feel to it. Um, handmade. Handmade doesn't mean sloppy, but it just means that it's made with love, um, with thought and mind, and with care. And especially if this is something you enjoy doing. So... So once I have this on here all the way around, what I will do is allow it to dry for a few hours and then I'll put a top coat on it. Now if you'll notice here, there's a little bit of a space where the napkin, where I cut the napkin and I can, you can either use your um, saran wrap to try and reposition, but you may end up with a larger mess, or you can just use a piece of a napkin that you pulled off from um, the edge to fill it in. It's not going to be a big deal. Again, this is handmade. It is not going to be perfect. Unless, of course, you yourself are perfect. Are you perfect? I know I'm not. Alright, so, I'm just applying the last little bit here. And then we will allow this to sit for a while. And then we'll come back and put the finishing touches on it. And while it dries, your handy dandy crafter friend Sam here will be starting up homeschool because it is almost time for my son to go into live class. We homeschool, but he has um, classes that he does virtually um, with other students and a teacher. So now I'm going to take this, the last final pieces, and um, I'm going to tear this off so that it can lay a little easier. Okay, so I'm going to need to tear some of this off. Oh, see how I messed that up with my fingers so that I can get this to lay. And if it messes up, it's not a problem. It's, every, it's fixable. And if it's not fixable, you can cover it up. Thank God for embellishments. Lace and trim and wonderful things like that. So I'm just taking those last little bits and laying Mod Podge, Mod Podge over them. And then make sure you have the um, edge of the base covered so that um, the paper can fold underneath it. Okay. And actually you only need to let this sit for about um, 10 or 15 minutes before you apply another coat of Mod Podge over it. It can be slightly wet. So what I'll do now is I'll go back and I'll take little pieces of napkin and go over any spaces that um, we missed. Or that we, I say we like you helped, <laughs> like you helped pull the paper off, um, any spaces that we, um, that are bare. And that's the good thing about using napkins is that they're so thin that even if you have to go back over them, it's not so noticeable. And having a print like this does help. Um, if you have another type of print, like say stripes, those perfections are going to be imperfections are going to be a little bit more obvious. So um, you know, get a little bit more practice before you get to those. Before you move on to those. Um, oh, that one is with it. Before you move on to those um, patterns that require a little bit more precision. Okay. We're going to go ahead and let that dry, and then I'll come back and move on to the last step. And I hope you guys are still with me. All right. 
Okay. So it is actually day two of um, the for this project, and I had went on ahead and applied a second coat of Mod Podge to this. Um, so it was one coat on the bottom, which I applied the napkin to, and then another coat on top of it. And I honestly had my hands full with um, taking care of some orders as well as homeschooling, so I didn't get a chance to come back and um, put that on camera. But I will um, share with you my process for um, finishing it off, which is merely just adding some trim around the edge. And I'm going to use this lace trim that I have here, this crochet trim that I've purchased from Ally Express and then a few other um, embellishments and then I'll add some flowers to it so um, so this trim I actually bought um, it came I probably got about um, two yards of it about two yards of it it was fairly inexpensive so I, it came in actually a pack of a bundle of maybe six or seven, I believe, um, other lace trims, different uh, different widths than I have. You. So I purchased this along with um, narrow ones and the um, beige or antique white. Now what I'm just going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of glue here to start the edge off, just to get the edge um, place to rest at, and then. I'm left-handed, so, and my pad's on the other side, so it won't be in the way of the camera. So I'm just going to place this down, bring it right below, and you don't have to glue each spot, but what you want to do is glue on top, or on, glue the trim itself in places where um, it's less noticeable, and then just press down lightly. And this is a Surebinder glue gun, fine tip, or craft tip, I think it was called. And uh, it works pretty good. I will say that it does leak a lot, and it is pretty stringy, but I know that there's quite a few different tips out there for that. So, um, just got to do a little bit of research. But So, you just want to bring this on around. And I'm leaving a little bit of an edge up top. That's just my preference. I'll just press it on down. You gotta love when you get right in the middle of a project, or right in the end, and then you gotta start a new stick of glue. That, that it never fails. Like right now, I am not gonna be able to finish this without grabbing another stick. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off the excess, okay. those wonderful strings, and don't worry about the line because I'm going to cover that up with something. a little bit of glue at the edge one so that it doesn't um, fray and two so um, it's a little bit less noticeable when you glue it on the ex out on the outside just pressing it down <clears throat> okay so we have that there All right, now next, there is, I have a couple of felt butterflies, as well as some pearl trim strands, pearl strands, and they look like they're about two millimeter, but um, this came on a roll. The roll is around here somewhere, but I usually cut off a few pieces and keep it inside my embellishment stash that is easily accessible but what I'm going to do is I am going to take let me move this glue gun out the way I'm going to take um, these strands and just place them on here 
with the hot glue and let them um, serve as like the little antenna. Is that antenna? Is it antennae? If it's more than one? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Okay, so that's what we'll do for that. And I'm not a neat freak, but when I'm crafting, it's I don't like to get overwhelmed by mess. So I usually have a bucket nearby for scraps and a bucket nearby for, with tools in it. Like this thing here. Um, it just That's just my process. I'm not a neat freak or um, immaculate by any stretch. I just don't like to be looking for anything. And usually don't have time to do it either. So I just toss everything in there. And then also sometimes I don't have time to do a full cleanup. So if I can just toss everything back into this one little container and shove it onto my bookshelf, then when I have time to actually put all the items away, then I'll do that. And I try to do that before each project. Um, and if I don't, I'll usually end up buying something twice because I'll be thinking that I don't have or are used up. Uh, you know, whatever it is that I'm looking for. And here it is in that um, bin stashed away all along. So I do try to keep those things. I am not neat like that. I just like to keep things orderly um, for the sake of the fact that I have no memory. And I ain't got time to be looking for nothing. Or And I don't want to spend my money replacing something I already have. Because I could be buying something new that I don't. Okay, so I wanted to use this little cute little butterfly just to put on top of, because obviously, as we see here, the theme of this is butterflies. So I wanted to use the butterfly to cover up where it meets. And so I'll just grab the hot glue gun, put a little on here. And I don't want it to, well, that glue stick is awfully yellow. I don't like that. Anyways, I'm not going to put it underneath the entire part of it because I do want the the wings to still sit up so we'll just leave that like that and then I'll just have it off centered or slanted if you will is that diagonal diagonal good lord okay so that's diagonal and I'm just getting the glue strings I'll clean that up later but um I think it came out pretty nice the last thing we have to do is now and again you can take lace trim and put it down at the bottom as well it doesn't have to just go at the top but i put it at the top to um, also enhance whatever flowers to complement whatever flowers that i put on and i just want you guys to see that this isn't perfect it isn't perfect but it's handmade and i think that's the beauty of it is that no one else has made this just you add the flowers you want the colors in the in the variations and colors that you want and the embellishments that you want and make it your own and then there you have a very pretty gift mother's day um, birthday baby shower centerpieces you know you may embellish it with a couple of little baby's feet or something like that so in any event i hope you liked it i hope you were inspired by this project if there is something that you would have added differently to it um, tell me what spin you would put on it. In the meantime, stay blessed, stay encouraged, and stay creative and crafting. Don't forget to stop by the Maker Exchange on Facebook, which is our creative and crafty Facebook community. <music>